Wow, okay, this one. I want to see this one. Let me just quickly pull this up here. USA's obesity epidemic. That's going to be interesting. Okay, let's go. This is Jackson, a small town in the southwestern United States. And hiding behind the walls of this little Reminds house me of a is an Johnny Cash. Illness, <laughs> an illness now widespread in America. Everything's just, get some money, get some gas. Yeah, and we'll get dinner. I'll get dinner afterwards and everything will be good. This man suffers from a disease that affects 93 million people in the nation, obesity. At just 34 years old, Casey King now weighs 400 Holy shit. pounds. According to him, he is a victim of fast food. We're good. What the fuck happened to you, man? I always wonder... I wonder where this is going, because I'm not really a fan of at blaming the man himself so it's just like oh man i'm just falling i just fall for all this uh, fast food i cannot handle it i cannot resist and i think that's not the right point but it's certainly certainly one point that needs to be addressed because man sticking to a certain diet i wouldn't just call it the diet i would it's i would tell it like some reason have reasonable a reasonable diet i mean you don't need to ban all this sugary stuff but most of the time avoided like 80 20 rule or something like this that needs to be taken into account but if you don't have an illness then i have my doubts but we see where this is going i live in jackson the very small city there are there's a mcdonald's there's a burger king there's a taco bell there's a kfc there's a there's a pizza hut there's a subway there's a little caesar yeah there's like in Dom's every city, there's, a city. there's um a fried chicken place and i'm 100 sure there's also a supermarket where it can buy not necessarily fresh food, but something like also frozen vegetables, which are, by the way, more nutrient dense. It's like a little. Most of the times. It, it's really good, but it's like a little family thing. There's um, there's a million different fast food restaurants. I can't really tell you any place that is a healthy restaurant, though. Hey, Years of bad eating habits have pushed his body to the limit. Yeah, that. No, there you go. Go. There you go. There you go, bud. Look out. No, no, bud. Even taking a shower is a difficult task for Casey. There's like a lot of skin. There's like a lot of skin hanging. There's like flabs and stuff. I, I jokingly tell people that I'm like a big like melted ice cream or whatever because it's just like stuff. Literally, it's almost like it's dripping off of me. Oh man. The figures are staggering. The average woman weighs 170 pounds and is five feet two inches tall, while the average man that on the is side. five feet seven and inches tall. Kg. I don't know what the Americans have with this kg. Of the nation is obese, including it's even the 2.5 somewhere, 2.2 somewhere. Ago, the conversion rate. The officially categorized him as obese, clearly a result of his love for fast food. Shit, okay. In January 2019, in honor of an American football team, Trump ordered a thousand hamburgers to be served at a White House reception. Yeah, you're a fucking moron. Sorry. We have everything that no, I not sorry. Like. And I know no matter what we did, there's nothing you can have that's better than that, right? I know a million all its history has the things that's better so than that. Overweight. We go to Las Vegas to follow Ricky, what a, a waitress in a fast food restaurant specializing in the world's most calorie laden burger. Casey King tells us what it's like to be morbidly obese. We're following family man Alex in his quest to lose weight through surgery. We visit an Arizona boarding school specializing in helping students lose weight. And finally, we're awesome. exploring the new body positivity movement that has recently sprung up in the U.S. In New York, there, I'm a big Arisa, fan of. A photographer and Annette, a blogger, show us a new perspective on obesity. <clears throat> finally, oh shit! We're off to Los Angeles for maybe a got to lose some subscribers here. We're watching this one. <laughs> These women own their obesity and don't shy away from showing oh, it off. Take him back. Take him cost. back. Obesity, American danger. Every year, 42 million tourists swarm the famous strip, eager for a taste of Sin City. Casinos, hotels, nightclubs, and of course, fast food outlets. There are some 40 in the downtown area alone, the capital of entertainment 
and junk food. A few minutes drive away is the area housing the majority of Las Vegas workers. Ricky Ogawa is a waitress in one of the city's largest fast food restaurants. This 30-year-old American lives with her husband and their two-year-old son. Despite Ricky's job, you won't find a single burger in her house. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Made with beans. So she is... No flour, no corn. Yeah, exactly. She's the complete opposite. And that's interesting because you have been exposed to so many things in your job that you are you're seeing what it does with the body and also you see the people that are coming in or not not like all of them but like 90 percent or 99 percent of the people that are coming into a fast food restaurant and the same happens it's a funny story that happened also with my mother when she was young she worked uh, um on the riverside uh in a restaurant uh selling cake to um to customers and also to tourists because it was kind of a tourist attraction here in Switzerland, this, uh, this valley with the river. And she would sell um, cake in her holidays during uh, school time. And she would, al she would always tell, tell me the best thing that she could have for a uh, birthday, for um, Easter break, for, um, for um, uh, Weihnachten, I don't know the name in English now, um, was salami. So something on the complete opposite spectrum, something um, salty, something pretty fatty and no sugar at all. And she worked as a person who sold cake, who, was, who had to smell every day. Every day she was smelling the cake, she was serving it to the customers. And she told me then later when I grew up um, that that was actually the case because she couldn't take it anymore. She couldn't, she had no pleasure in eating cake on her free day then or when she didn't work and that's that's really interesting what happens to you when you are exposed to something like this when you have it in your trade job man she's healthier than me <laughs> Serving True. sodas and burgers every day has driven Ricky to ban them from her own home. For a good reason, too. The restaurant where she works really puts the junk in junk food. Lots of fruit in it. Lots of fruit in it. She spends an hour every morning getting ready. Her waitress uniform? A gimmicky nurse's costume. Oh, that's hard. A nurse? Oh. Nurse in a fast food restaurant. Ready to turn yeah. on Nurse Ricky. I definitely play a role when I'm there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, she just it's normal. It's more of being a uh, burger geisha. It's not just, you know, here's your food, have a good time. I try to make it more of an experience instead of just a a burger joint. Mascara, glitter, lipstick, and a tight-fitting dress is all it takes to turn Ricky into a nurse at the junk food hospital. The junk food hospital is... No, that's really a thing. But it's not medicine that the doctor has ordered. No. Here at the Heart Attack Grill, patients are prescribed burgers, fries, sodas, and more. It's the only place like it in the world. It caters to folks who like their food deep fried and super just, just quickly, let me show you this one. Uh, Google Maps, the Chunk Food Hospital. I wanted to search if this is a, a real thing. <laughs> what comes KFC Runcorn Hospital way in? Where is it? Liverpool. It's somewhere in England. <laughs> oh, man. Funny. Okay, back to the documentary. Before being seated, Diners are weighed on a gigantic scale. The fatter you are, the better. 
If you weigh over 350 pounds, you fucking your morons. Every little fries are on the house. Weighing in at 400 pounds, this customer is getting a free all-he-can-eat meal. The servings are humongous. For regulars here, though, eating a quadruple burger. That's the burger thing with easy. America. How oh, fucking hell? I I never been to the states, but I have this impression that everything more huge, bigger, faster, louder, shittier is better. Is that? God damn it! I mean, look at this. It's nasty. Ricky even goes as far as selling only beverages high in sugar and calories, and there's not a healthy vegetable in sight. Bottled water is the same price as a soda because we don't really want you to drink it. You can take anything off the burger you don't like, uh, but we. Did you hear this? Water, the same price, the fucking same price as soda. Why the fuck would anyone in normal sense, a normal human being, take then the water when the soda tastes better, when you don't know about the side effects? Because clearly they don't, because they're in this nasty restaurant. What the actual fuck? We only have bacon that you can add to it. So we have absolutely nothing green, no lettuce, no pickles, no avocado. Not even an avocado! <laughs> Cheese yeah, it's too healthy. <laughs> Every man in their forties be like, and then ten years after their death. Dead. I mean, I love burgers too, but I want to make them for myself. That's crazy, man. Everything here is designed to harm your health. Smoking is encouraged. Cocktails are served in pill containers, and wine is on tap in an IV. No, 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 no. You can't smoke inside. What? 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 The fast food joint claims it has been curing <coughs> anorexia <coughs> since 2005. <laughs> For those who don't know, okay, I pull up. Sticky booty out, out, perfect. If you don't finish your plate, you're dragged to the front of the joint for a good old-fashioned spanking while everyone watches. Yeah, anorexia is basically just the opposite of what we're talking about here. When you eat too less, and you're gonna eat, get like most of the guys in the gym are like and are suffering from anorexia. This fast food restaurant serves over 650 customers a day and rakes in five million dollars per year. Yeah, he loves it. Mm -hmm. Not a love tip. You better finish your burgers. From the food to the spankings, it's all one big show at the Heart Attack Grill. The star attraction is the world's most calorie-laden burger, the Octuple Burger, a gigantic, towering pile of eight hamburger. Quadruple, quint, sex, sept, octuple. I mean, yeah, come on, that's, that's just for the sake of being big, right? It takes 25 minutes to prepare. The entire thing weighs 6.5 pounds. This meat monster contains 20,000 calories, the equivalent of one week of food. What? Just this one? I've eaten a burger when I was in England, which was like... And I had like half an hour to finish it. Half an hour to finish a burger like this here when I was uh, in England, when I was learning uh, English. Uh, that's why my English sounds like this now. <laughs> no, just joking. But man, it was like, I think, whoops, three to four thousand um, calories or something like this. And this is like 20,000? What the fuck? It is massive. Here's that big burger I promised. Yeah, I mean, I get it, yes, but like I would many, try it too to if I would be there. Burger, and so he'll get a spanking for not cleaning up his plate. But yeah, for sure you can't finish this 20,000 colors of oh, shit. Oh. American fast food is now also unhealthy entertainment. 
As a result, oh shit, she likes it. Million overweight people in the yeah, US, and she does too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, the birthplace of the world's leading soft drink brand. Cola? No. Georgia has well over 5,000 fast food outlets, and the state's obesity rate is nearly 32%. Escaping junk food is a huge challenge for those in the nearby town of Jackson. The area offers very little in the way of leisure activities. Your only options are fishing. So not enough movement. Lake, yeah. Or taking fishing. Advantage wow. of one of the many fast food restaurants. We return to Casey King. He has lived here his whole life with his father. I got this picture here. He was uh, two or maybe. Oh well, man, a sweet little redhead like me. Thanks. Appreciate it. He weighed 12, 6 when he was born. He's never been really small. He's just been real healthy. Healthy. Casey started gaining lots of weight after a serious ankle injury. He Not spent moving. weeks in bed, only eating fast food. Morning, noon, and night. Whole foot-long sandwiches, pizza, fried chicken, that kind of stuff. I mean, that was just the easiest, quickest stuff to get. I mean... And also not having like one of things, but two of things, like two burgers from McDonald's. It was bad, but then it was made worse. My appetite was so big that we ate so much of the bad food. I guess I could have took some action to, about it, but I, I don't know. I, I, I really couldn't, I couldn't figure out what, I, what really I could do. He was just trying to make me happy, and I just wanted to be happy, and food was one of those things that was constantly a thing that did that. Neither his father nor his brother, a Marine, suffer from obesity. Casey's poor eating habits are the sole source of his <coughs> weight problem. At 33 years old, he even reached a record weight of 700 pounds. I was just eating until I'm dead, probably. 317, 317 kilos. Wake up around 12, figure out something I'm going to eat immediately. TV, video games, bed. It's not a lot of activity. Yeah, but doesn't he have to work? I always wonder, like, what the fuck? What the fuck are they doing? Doesn't don't he has to work? Shows him morbidly obese. The show's producer cut him a deal. They would pay for a ten thousand dollar operation if he would participate in the program. It's weird being going from seven hundred eleven pounds to like. 470. It hasn't even been a year yet. It's kind of cool. That's awesome, bro. Sports three times a week. <clears throat> yes. Okay, goodbye. I'll be back later. Alright, be careful. Oh, so I'll be careful. Super careful. And he's regained his independence at long last. I mean, in this stage, you have to imagine that he has gained his independence. Meaning he can now move on himself. He can take he can take a walk. He can go buy a car. He can go buy food. He can go wherever he wants now. That's something he couldn't before because of his weight. Imagine. Uh, Fuck, man. Fuck. I didn't drive for seven uh, years. That hits you. And I've only been driving again for like a month, two months maybe. I was tethered to my father in every shape of the way. Yeah, it was man. difficult at times. I mean, there's tons of like weddings I didn't go to. I had friends that had kids that I didn't go see them. That's also because I had just changed so much that I really wasn't the proud of the person I was. Every kind of conversation I would have with people would be centered about around what are you eating? What are you doing to lose weight? I was like, can we talk about anything but my weight, please? Please. Like, I, I don't, I didn't feel human. I felt like. I don't know, like a like a like a zoo animal. But rapid weight loss causes various problems. Previously, his skin had to stretch to accommodate his weight. Now he's lighter, and he has too much of it. The only solution is surgery, but Casey cannot afford it. Oh, man, Swimming that's is one of the few activities that he has available to him. Like the 
cheap stuff, like that'll be fine. But like this stuff, and probably this will all have to be cut off. Hey. Uh, yeah. Good, how are you? I'm good. So since May, I'm down like 235 pounds. So it's good to just be like noticed for like something good instead of just being like, like they notice you just for being the big guy. They not notice you for being the big guy that's trying to lose weight. Yeah, I'm definitely proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's good. I need to change my eating habits. But yeah. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not. It's not. For the most part, everyone that's ever came up to me has had something positive to say. Either they're like I motivated them, or the show changed their life, or they showed them that they the error in their ways. They got inspired, and this was like an opportunity to changed my life from positive, so there was nothing that was going to stop me from doing it. Today, Casey is hoping for another chance at a reality show to finance his operation. Last year, he and some 230,000 other Americans underwent weight loss operations. That's a 30% rise. He, can somebody check this for me? Give me a reality check? Why doesn't he just get a job i mean he would have he could still go to training three times a week he would have extra um calorie expenditure through work uh, never mind if he's just sitting he has to take the bus or the um the car to get there get back home that's a few steps more than he has now he could save up some money because clearly he can live with no job so then everything that he gets or maybe 50 or 60 percent he could save up for the search why why doesn't that work i mean sure it's going to be hard to get a job with his conditions but i mean yes it should be possible right or is it the situation different in uh, the states i don't know honestly today alex perez is choosing to make the same choice hello hello hi i'm alex okay alex Okay, thank you. Alex weighs 300 pounds. He is only 40, but he has the health problems of a 60-year-old. High blood pressure, sleep apnea, respiratory and muscular disorders. All of this due to being overweight. Stomach reduction surgery is his last hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, go for it. I know somebody myself that did it and has great success with it. Ever. His wife, Jasmine, convinced him to take this course of action. She too used to be obese. She had the operation two years ago. I was very, very close to getting to 300s. Yeah, she was a big girl. But it just got to the point where I was a big girl. 150 kilos, yeah. It's a, point that I'm it's a little bit more than a big girl. I can't go camping with my son and, and keep up with him because he's he's 155 pounds and he's a, he's a firecracker. So I can't, there's no way I can keep up with him. I can't do the normal things that a, that a father does, you know? And, that's why that's it. I'm done. I'm ready for it. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. How much weight yeah. have you lost? Um, about 70 pounds. 70? Yeah. Wow. This Miami Clinic's obesity specialist is Dr. Choi. He has performed over 4,000 operations like this. It's a new technique for rapid weight loss that involves neither physical exercise nor special food regimes. With a reduced stomach, the patient feels. But. Yes, that's the thing. There's a big but. It sounds like a quick fix, but it really is not. Because yes, you might have lower appetite, but you need to address also your habits. And the habits are the things that will kill it in the long term. Because it's not fighting the urge to take, oh, maybe this one here, this one here. It's fighting the urge every time you, your habits kick in. Yes, you might have lower appetite, but you will still go for um, the sugary soda over the water or the sugary soda over the sugar-free soda. And if you cannot fight this habit of, that brought you in the first place into this uh, situation, then you might have like a first success where your weight drops because of the lower appetite, but slowly but surely, it's going to go... Up again. Satisfied with That's meals. at least what I believe about this operation. It's good, yes, but you also need to address the habits and change those. I mean, it's radical for sure, and it's also needed here in this situation. 
job, Senor Perez, is to cut and remove about 70 to 80 percent of the stomach. Wow. You can be like, but why do you need to remove so much of it and make it look like a banana? Because there is this hormone here called really ghrelin. And What's the appetite to remove, right? My patients tell me they're not hungry anymore. And they I think so. Less food because you're restricting, okay? Thank you, Dr. Chow. Oh, thank you, allowing me thank you. to do all this with me, okay? Of course. All right, and you're helping him out, too. <laughs> Prior to the operation, Alex will have to fast for three days. That, however, is nothing compared to the cost of the operation. Okay. Um, ghrelin is an appetite-stimulating hormone released mostly by the stomach. Ghrelin's potential hasn't escaped the attention of the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, we just want you also to make our uh, duty to educate the public here right <laughs> no, just it, it's it's something that interests me myself and pulling it up here no no yada 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 let's have a look at the function Grun is a participant in regulating the complex process of energy homeostasis mm -hmm. oh, yeah which is just both energy input, hunger signal, and energy output. Oh, yeah. So it's by adjusting the proportion of energy going to ATP production faster. And should, okay. Yeah, ATP is just like the um, like the source of energy for your body, the main source, and something that creatine can help you with. Um, because when you train and um, you you uh, empty your storages of ATP very fast, then it can happen that you could have done one repetition more that you couldn't do now because you didn't have enough ATP. And uh, that's where uh, creatine then comes in because creatine gives then a phosphorus part to the ADP, adenosine, adenosine diphosphate, back and makes it to ATP, adenosine, adenosine triphosphate, so free phosphate particles, and then the cyclos again. So every time when we need energy in the body, um, ATP is broken down into ADP, so one phosphate particle is split up, their energy is released, and we can perform tasks like me moving around on this chair here, um, speaking, talking with my hands, with my mouth, and whatever. $11,000, none of Something which on the side. is covered by health insurance. The couple has decided I have a video about this, by the way, on the channel, in uh, nutrition Alex supplements for martial artists. Watch it. It's an older one, but I mean, it's pounds. still valid. These are some of my family pictures here at our wedding when we were married. As you can see, I was a lot skinnier and she was heavier. When she had the surgery that she lost the weight, I gained the weight. I let myself go. Being lazy, eating wrong, eating at the wrong times. The work schedule in the United States is very... No, crazy. that's an excuse, bro. And you come Sorry. home and you eat and you're so tired and so exhausted that you lay down and usually pass out and go to sleep. Yeah, but that... No. It's been 10 days no, now no, no. since Alex has had anything solid to eat. A very difficult stage for him, but necessary to prepare his body for the operation. Beef cubes, what's I this? I come home and eat this. Macaroni and cheese. And now for the operation, I'll come home and get a glass of water and take out one of these, melt it in the water, stir it. It just has the flavor of beef. So it feels like you're actually eating something, but you're not. It's, it's just liquid. Crazy is something before uh, making soup. It's his last night with his entire stomach before surgery will forever alter his life. Obesity affects everyone in America. This includes teenagers, roughly 14 million of yeah, them nationwide. Yeah, but there it's again the parents who are not educated enough. And that's not Phoenix, necessarily Arizona, their fault. Population 1.6 million. Here, one in three adults is obese. What the fuck? Shut up! In one in Arizona three! Desert, between cacti and mountains, a new type of boot camp sprang up in Scottsdale last year. I need to go there to become like a fitness mansion. trainer. It work as fitness trainer there. Girls, ages the fuck? The market is huge! <laughs> what the fuck? Their is set for a four-month minimum and it will leave them $31,000 out of pocket. 
walk about 1.5 and then walk back. Every morning, seven days a week. We did the math and it's 21 miles a week, so. <laughs> it's a nice time to like wake up and see the sunrise. It's definitely made me feel more productive, for sure. Man, seeing this, I have been sick for the last couple of days. I'm still not feeling good um, right now, but either way, I'm doing it. I want to see this now because it's also for me personally, because I've been eating like a douchebag the last couple of days as well. Because, uh, yeah, sick. You're sick, you don't work, you don't train, you do nothing, you don't have like this drive that I usually have, this drive for doing things. And it's slowly coming back now. Maybe I go to training, to kickboxing today. Maybe weights, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna be doing something today. And this also, this doing something early in the morning really helps. That really helps. The girls but it gives me like back this. <clears throat> I want to do something. At nine o'clock and it's monitored. Yeah, that's good. Cereal. <laughs> Is that the best thing, eh? <laughs> <Finals. laughs> yeah, not the best thing. Calories. Never heard of my fitness pal, right? Well, when is this from? <laughs> and we write it after we eat it to keep track of it. We do it for every meal and then we just add it all up and write the totals for every meal. Lindsay, the staff nutritionist, calculates the calories in each meal. One year? No. no, no, no. But it, maybe it's a re upload. This is um, kind of a peanut butter substitute, it has a little bit less calories. Oh, nice, I want this. The school has created a I mean, peanut butter is awesome for getting muscle. Meal, with the aim of curbing appetite. Yeah, peanut butter banana, I love this too. So I'll probably have another piece of fruit and be at a six. Yep. We usually shoot for a six at meals. Um, I know what you're doing, yeah, this, this Weight Watchers thing, the, right? Um, but, but I love myself to be at a ten. So <laughs> like, oh, six, so then I'm sad, yeah, satisfied. They're learning to live with Felix. If I don't have to do something Kaylee after. Kaylee is 18. She's from Texas. <clears throat> she entered the academy weighing 240 pounds. She has but now lost almost... I'm stuffing myself with, like, chicken, um, potatoes, um, something like this, rice, um, a mixture with vegetables, and, yeah. That's then pounds. something different than fast food. I mean, yeah, junk food. Fast food is not necessarily bad. Kaylee owes the weight loss to Lindsay. She teaches the students healthy eating habits. Today, Lindsay's nutrition class is highlighting the danger of eating salt-rich food. High sodium content can lead to problems with blood pressure. So cool, I want to have this. I mean, also for myself. All right, guys, so we're going to talk a little bit about sodium today. Um, how much sodium do you think is the recommendation? A thousand. <laughs> so thousand in general, worked. for all Americans, we're saying about uh, 2,300 milligrams. Take a look at the things you usually eat at home, out, fast food, at restaurants, and we're going to bring up that nutrition content that we've looked at before and take a look at the sodium in some of our favorites. Yeah, I mean, you go crazy when you do this. My favorite one was the highest one. Okay. It's always higher than you think it's going to be with things. Like, the calories is 450. Like, the carbs are a little too high compared to what I would usually eat here. And so is the... Oh, wait, I want to see. I, I, I'm just a nerd what this... <laughs> I sort of almost every product just out of interest to see. Oh, okay, what's inside? What's inside? Oh, okay. So what do we have? 450 calories? Calories from fat. Yeah, that's quite a good amount of fat but i mean it's also luxury that i mean you have cholesterol um sodium that even that you have dietary fiber and sugars i mean a year in i don't know how is it how it is in the other countries in europe in europe but in switzerland at least you just have to put on um salt protein carbs and fats everything that is on a little bit a thin net so, I mean, here, in the fats, the saturated fat, the trans fats, the, the good fats, the omega-3s, or here, carbs, uh, fiber, sugars, polyalcohols, maybe, is also a thing. That is up to the producer, to the manufacturer of the product, to put this on the nutrition table. 
And they actually, they don't have to. They do it out of goodwill to show, okay, this is, my product is good or my product is better to compare to maybe another one. But that this is not mandatory. I mean, this is crazy. Like calories from fats that you have this, I, I don't know if this is a normal thing, but that's, that's amazing. And it should be everywhere like this. Also pretty high. My favorite meal <laughs> is the chicken teriyaki bowl. And I checked the sodium and it was so high. I think a lot of it's just not knowing. Like what Yeah, really? Is? Chicken teriyaki bowl? Like, yeah, I wouldn't. Like calorie intake and stuff and just not Don't make me not look, but... So I think awareness is like a Chicken teriyaki bowl, I mean, that's something doing? I could... So yeah, so nah, come on. So I, so you can't tell, but that's unhealthy. Besides their nutrition classes, Kaylee and her friends keep up with their regular classes all That's online awesome, five hours per day. I finished everything and went back. Was there anything yesterday? I checked. And where's your speech? And yeah, that as well. You got that here? Mm -hmm. I was going to read through it and take some notes. Yeah, definitely do that. Okay. 3.30 p.m. Once the school day is over, it's time for cooking lessons. Twice a week, the girls learn how to prepare a balanced meal. Wow! Easily be able to recreate back home. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, some could say, oh, "Why do all the women have to do this?" But yeah, says, "Fuck you." <laughs> Today's menu includes a cauliflower-based hummus, but the classes are varied with the aim of introducing the girls to new ingredients. Yeah, it's time, man. It's it's the time. It takes time. Doesn't really cook at home, but very, very once in a while, and usually it's pasta because it's quick. But it's, it's fun cooking. I never really thought about cooking until I came here, but now I do it every every other day. A lot of fun food, and it was not. I would sometimes come home feeling very like sick, and I don't like that feeling. Abby, can I have salt, please? Strong. I'm going to just put it in for a little bit longer so it gets a little softer. But it doesn't stop there. To spur weight loss, the girls have one hour of mandatory physical training every day. And where should you feel your squat? In your butt. Booty! Yeah. No. This afternoon, a full hour high energy workout. In your quads! God damn it. Tom Platz would be very disappointed. to as a fat camp or a weight loss camp are oh, completely different. I mean, we aren't just here to exercise, exercise, eat vegetables, exercise. The girls are doing so much more than just this. This is just one component. We try to do all sorts of fitness, um, hit training, Zumba, sports. Do martial arts. Martial arts plus weights. They're going to lose weight in like no time. The goal is to give them the physical tools needed in order to lose weight, stay in good health, and appreciate their bodies. That's self love, and I'm sure now we're going to the body positivity. I don't know, I'm really enjoying myself right now. That's self love. I feel it makes me feel good. So, yeah, feel accomplished. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome, man. So cool. This evening, the school has a special surprise for the teens. For the first time in many weeks, they're getting a night out on the town. It's a much needed break for these youngsters searching for their identity. Kylie, pull together! <laughs> I want to become a singer, and so I'm going to study music in college. I chose to come to help like boost my confidence with like my performing arts because I love music so much. I definitely think it's going to be a new level of confidence on stage, not having to worry about certain things. In their quest to lose weight, these girls have left family and friends behind, taking time out of their lives in order to slim down and no longer be defined solely by their weights. <laughs>
We return to Alex, whose big day has finally arrived. He is going to have two thirds of his stomach removed. How does he feel after just surgery? That's it's going to be interesting. This morning, all worried, so I told him to relax. Everything will be fine. With surgery looming, Alex is feeling anxious, but more than that, he's exhausted from three days of fasting. Feel it, bro. It's the first big operation that that I've ever had. At the hospital, several members of his family and George, his best friend, are there to support him. You ready? Gotta get this over with. Gotta get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah buddy. Lightweight. Make sure that he wakes up. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can pick him a little. I need something juicy in front of him now. I wouldn't do that to him. Do I get filet mignon tonight? You know, lobster no. tail? No. <laughs> I mean, a steak? It's not too bad. Bye. Steak's not too bad. We'll be performing five similar operations today, all on obese patients. Alex is the first on the list. I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? Any medical problems I need to know about? Nope. That's going to be a quick operation, right? If you ask five in one day. You're the first. Okay. <clears throat> questions? Um. Is it gonna hurt afterwards? It, it, it might, you might feel some pain after, but I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna take care of you with all the pain meds. But tranquilo, all right, relax. Everything's gonna be fine. Okay, I'm gonna take care of you. Yeah, tranquilo, right. tranquilo, brother. <laughs> Alex is struggling to stay calm, but luckily Jasmine is on hand. Excited? Ready? Yeah, he's so stressed out. I guess you smile. Yeah. The Every man needs to to support him general anesthesia. And vice versa. It's now one hour before the operation, and the sedatives are making him feel drowsy. Mm -hmm. And some medicine. It's working. <laughs> no, I totally forgot that. Alex wakes up an hour from now. <laughs> He'll have lost a large part of his <laughs> Explained to him prior to surgery. Now, did he run into problems? Leaking stomach liquids and bowel obstruction can occur after this type of surgery, but these are the risks patients are willing to take in order to lose weight. He should lose an average of 10 to 15 pounds a month, with a possible weight loss of 80 to 90 pounds in one year. His life is going to change completely. He's going to feel like a completely different person. It's official. He started, you know, brand new and. I can't wait to see the transformation. So, a little anxious. Dr. Choi begins his work on Alex's stomach. First, he makes an incision to insert a camera. The procedure is done by watching the screen. Crazy that they can't film this, right? I don't know if I would be in that situation and. Let the documentary film this. But yeah, maybe for the good cause. The surgeon uses two surgical tools to section yeah. Alex's stomach. Here we see him working these clamps and scissors inside Alex's abdomen. Sad that they censor it. It would have been interesting to see. After an hour and a half, the operation is over. Okay, well, the doctor you know, could maybe he's not having like. Everything well. Every, uh -huh. bien, todo sale bien. Everything went well. I tested it. He's he had a really big stomach. Thank Sorry. You, get on my son. <laughs> Man, I'm so full of prejudice. I'm gonna hate myself for this. Sale <laughs> bien. Everything went well. I tested it. Again, again. Chinese man speaking, I think Spanish, I don't know. 
Spanish Portuguese living in America and being proud. <laughs> Shit. Oh, uh. well, I tested it. He, he it's like every stereotype ever. Yeah. Mixed together, you know. Well and lovely. No, no, lovely he man. He can put down for sure. Absolutely. Yes. No, no, he won't be able to. Thank you again, Ray. Greeting you again. Thank you, Nishazan. Okay. Two days later, we find Alex up and on his feet. He is just starting to walk again. He is having far more pain than anticipated. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah. That's too sweet. Your taste buds change completely. Um, what was not sweet before is now very, very sweet. I, I knew it was gonna hurt, but I didn't think it was gonna hurt this bad. <clears throat> the pain prevents him from moving freely. He can't lie down in bed, and the slightest movements hurt his stomach. <sighs> it's gonna be like that for the first couple of days, and then it'll, but it was gonna get better. His son, Donovan, has come to visit him for the first time since the operation. What are you feeling? Better. Yeah, tired. And you'll see it. So now my stomach is just here. So all the stomach that was all here, he took it out through here. If I would have kept on the way I was, I would be dead in 10 years. I'll be around to see graduate from college and, and grow up to be a good man and, you know, did it for him. Gastrectomy is becoming more and more common in the U.S. 135,000 people underwent the procedure in 2017, a huge increase on five years ago when only 29,000 gastrectomies were performed. While some Americans may be turning to surgery in order to lose weight, another movement has come to prominence. Oh, no, no. A movement that rejects painful surgeries, fad diets, and teen boot camps. It's the body positivity revolution, encouraging people to take pride in their bodies, no matter their size. I just let it go. For... Quick. Five, ten minutes, maybe. The attendees of this New York party are celebrating women, especially those who love cool. and accept their bodies as they are. The, the opening stand. night of the International Women's Travel Festival. Among the globe-trotting attendees, Annette Richmond's team is making a huge sensation. These American women have come here to prove that there is no shame or problem with being overweight. Quite the opposite. Annette has made body positivity her mission and even her job. I feel like it's important to have representation of fat people traveling to inspire other people that are fat to travel. Um, it's not easy though. There are going to be different things that fat people have to face and have to deal with and have to consider that maybe straight size people don't. But my whole goal is to show that it's worth it. Annette is fighting for recognition for obese people. Several airline companies in the country now that it's, require obese people. To sorry, that took me. That it's worth it. That what is worth? Bad people have to face and have. Um, it's not easy though. There are going to be different things that bad people have to face and have to deal with and have to consider that maybe straight size people don't. But straight size people come to show that it's worth it. Annette. That it's worth it. It's worth to be. So if it's worth to be obese, it's more worth to be obese than straight size is that can't be what she was saying right that, that that's not it so what could it be then it's worth it maybe it's maybe oh maybe she wanted to uh, phrase it this way it's 
more worth than taking surgery and having paid for a couple of days and then fix a problem. I think that's what she meant and I'm not agreeing with this as well, but the other one would have been posh, no. <laughs> for recognition for obese people. Several airline companies in the country now require obese people to pay for two seats. She yeah. aims to combat this injustice. That's not injustice. Sorry, that's not injustice. If you have a medical issue with be that forces you to be obese and I don't know why but in my life I have met two women who had a, a disease with the uh, I cannot remember the name uh this uh, in English the disease with the uh blah, 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 blah. Uh, thing in your body that regulates the hormones T R uh, T H T and something else that doesn't matter how l how small your portions how small your portions are when you eat you still gain weight because it brings down your um your calorie expenditure and I, I know what you uh, I know you know what I mean so and it's extremely rare but one of my ex girlfriend had this and I. I know for a fact I saw what she was eating. I mean, she was eating like a salad and a bit of fruit and maybe a, uh, a little handful of nuts and that's it for the whole day and she was working full time. And she still was not in like this shape. She, she gained weight over time and it was, it's physically impossible that, or it was impossible that she was like getting up in the night, sneaking into calories. That's not, that didn't happen. So if you don't have this kind of medical conditions that you are forced or forcing to being obese then you for fuck's sake need to pay because when you need two seats when you need two seats you need to pay for this it's your fault and if you don't want to be in like shape or just in normal conditions and i say normal yes i say normal conditions not in not obese conditions that that's your choice that's okay <laughs> nobody i mean nobody says something against this because you can do with your body what you want because you have to face the consequences but one of the consequences is that you maybe have to pay two seats and by a, going against this law it's an easy way out of not facing the consequences of your actions I'm not a fan of this but I'm sure she would disagree. Maybe some of you do as well. Let me know in the comments. I'm happy to discuss. Influencer. Originally from California, she travels to provide content for her social media accounts. Her blog has a very specific following, fans of the body positivity movement. That's so crazy. I have almost 20,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> oh wow, well, I have 15,000, so what? What happened with the sound? Sound away? Yeah, sound away. Last summer, she created a body pop... Last summer, she created a body positive fat camp. A vacation spot for fat people. Campers got to show off their bodies without worrying about being judged. It was quite the success. So much so that she and her team are already planning the next one. I mean, without being judged, yeah, I get this. I get this point, but sometimes or what I also have heard is the people talking about, oh man, it's not about the body. I want to feel I want to feel accepted, I want to feel myself as a human being, I want to feel as part of a community and so ever. And I mean, it's not, you cannot take it away from like objective things. You are being ob objective. I mean, it's all about the body and it's just in the other extreme than the fitness bubble is going. And you can't you can't separate this. I mean, it's still you are there because of your body, not because you are like uh, following a certain job or following a certain whatever. Hello, my lovely. 
lovely. Welcome to the meetup. <laughs> All of them have been stared at due to their weight. All of them have become activists, campaigning to change public opinion. Instead of change something. And you're smart, and you're tall, and you have curly hair. Like, I am tired of people being ashamed to live in a bigger body. It's ridiculous. I would have been willing to die to be fit. 100%. I would have welcomed cancer if it meant I was going to lose weight. I remember, like, in high school, kids would get mono, and they drop, like, 15 pounds. I'm like, man, I really want mono. <laughs> thinner than I am now if I had not yo-yo dieted since the age of eight because I fucked up my metabolism by doing that so I oh that there's another one bigger, but I think <laughs> yeah that's not gonna happen now, actually and yes it's it's happening yes but not to the extent of people think yo -yo for most of my life. but their message and attitude don't appeal to everyone many doctors are against this movement their worry that it will lead young people to dismiss the dangers of obesity. Yeah. Oh my God, do you know how many times I've been told I'm promoting obesity? Anytime I drop a swimsuit photo. Okay, that's maybe wrong. Nobody asked about your opinion. <laughs> she can do this. She can wear a swimsuit and go to the pool and go to the beach, whatever. And nobody has to take the fucking guts to talk to her like hide your body hide your body you're promoting a beast yeah, then you're a fucker yourself yes for sure but that's not the problem right what you're talking about i mean that yeah that's something that's not okay for sure but the problem is that they are talking in a certain way that in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions think um they're promoting bad habits to people that are maybe not that strong or don't have a strong or solidified opinion about certain things and I'm lucky to have built this for myself. And but it was myself. I searched out for help, and I, yeah, educated myself. And I was once in a place like them. I was, don't know what it is, um, in pounds, but I can search it for you. I was to uh, LB, kg to LB, yeah. So I was 120 kilo in my top. So I was 264 pounds. At my worst times, and this is this is what when I wanted to make then a change. I maybe I find some photos that I can show on Instagram or something, but this is really where I need. I I knew for a fact it was I was nineteen or twenty years maybe, um, and I know I knew that when I don't make the change now when I'm young, I will never be an old man, which is in a good shape. And I mean, you can tell me whatever you want, but I think, or in my little head, in my little word, it's always like, you want to be a cool old man. You want to be a man with a white beard. You have maybe some muscles, you're having a family, you're having a house, whatever. All these things, but you want to live healthy and a good life. You want to move, you want to be able to move when you're 60, 70, 80 years old. I want to move. And you cannot be an old man, 60 years of age, um, finishing with work because you go into retirement and then think, oh, maybe I should start lifting weights. No, it works this way. When you want to be old and athletic, you need to be young and athletic. And that's one of the ways that I told myself, God fucking sake, you move your arse now. And at the end of the day, I'm not promoting obesity. I'm promoting you do. just when you tell it's okay just by taking the picture no today is an important day for fat girls but fuck no there's another one there's another one because they're influencers because they're influencer everything that they do on social media feeds their own purpose it's i mean it's not the same when an influencer does a picture Oh my, my 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 brain is rushing. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> it's not the same. Um, when an influencer is doing something, 
posting on social media and when like your friend that has 200 followers is uh yeah that's maybe not <laughs> the best i was totally on purpose but <laughs> pun intended no um that the normal friend does because an influencer always has a mission that they want to do something or achieve something it may be spreading their mission getting more followers getting engagement for ads uh, for a campaign for a um, yeah for a campaign uh, with a brand or something but my friend here that lives across there um, in the first um, flat on the bottom floor man he just wants to share how he spent this weekend with his girlfriend you know that's something else when they now post as if you and as a matter of fact if they are obese i don't know they are obese now and they nobody would tell them oh, cover yourself up you're promoting obesity no nobody would but because the other ones that we see here in this documentary the people from the uh, body positive movement have a clear statement uh, online what they are doing everything that they do becomes something from their statement i don't know if i put my words here correctly but you know i think you know what i mean by this so yes actually i think by just putting a picture up, they're promoting obesity, but it's self-induced because they put themselves in a place or on one side of the spectrum with having this opinion. Maybe I do the same when I post a fitness picture. Maybe I do the same. They're going to talk about but it's self-induced. That's the point like that I want to make. Living with the consequences, it comes down to this. Launched six years ago, this festival aims to connect influential women in the travel world. This year is the first year that overweight people have been invited to discuss the issues they faced, just like the one they're experiencing today. The stage was designed for five slim people. There is simply not enough room on stage for the five members of Annette's team. <laughs> plus size women, how are we supposed to fit up there on that stage? And I know that they're not doing it maliciously. It just no, they're not. They're taking the average. <laughs> I mean, it's not that the people are malicious, as she says. They're just taking like five chairs. And if the five chairs don't fit for five super fat persons or people, persons, people, then yeah. That's because the manufacturer of the chair was manufacturing the chairs after a certain standard. And the standard is most of the times the average. And if that average is good or bad, we can debate. But do we really want to have the average as fat? I don't know if we want this. They didn't think about people living in bigger bodies need more space. And that is the exact reason why we're here. We are plus size women and we need a little more space. So thank you, Kelly. Yeah. We're all going on stage. You guys ready? Yeah. You excited? Maybe I, maybe you should watch and some arguments team, about this. Or maybe an, an argument that would be interesting maybe to getting my myself out of the bubble as well. That. It can be a little bit scary um, having to ask for an extender, having to ask for more space on an airplane or a bus. That makes people fearful. Mm -hmm. um, and so my goal with creating Fat Girls Traveling was to kind of shake it things up a little bit, um, but also to help take the stigma away from it. Because fat does not mean ugly. Fat does not mean lazy. That's true. Fat does not mean unlovable. Fat does not mean anything, but I have more fat on my body than you. Yes, that's true. Amazing, you did such a good job. Thank you, so much. In America, the body positivity movement is fighting back. Tonight at Bounce, a Los Angeles nightclub, you have to be oh, overweight to dance, and large, figure-hiding clothes are not allowed. Tonight, it's singles night. Men who aren't necessarily obese come to meet women who are overweight. The MC is Lisa Marie Garbo, an icon okay. in the nightclub scene. She's a specialist in plus size I mean, it's America.
Actually, now when I think about this in here, it's and body positivity actually something pretty money. cool. Yeah. Every party at the club generates about forty-five hundred dollars yeah. in ticket sales alone. These women and some 35 million overweight Americans are now daring to wear tight-fitting, sexy outfits. And walls are being broken down in the fashion industry, which has for so long upheld yeah, that's as something the absolutely positive. Last year, Tess Holliday, an obese model, <clears throat> was featured on the cover of Cosmopolitan, a first in the history of fashion magazines. And in New York, one photographer has decided to go even further to smash industry norms. In her photo studio, Karitza puts the spotlight on overweight women. She is doing a photo shoot today for an exhibition. The theme? Women with curves. Oh my god, let's stay. Chin up a bit. You are my hero. Love it. I love it. You know, in the size community, it's growing. You know, fashion projects it's not anymore something small now it's era of big things big projects yeah because as we saw america was always the thing of sm always the country of small things all over <laughs> the world fuck? to studio. Hi, I'm Sophie. Nice, to meet you. nice to meet you sophie turner's 670,000 and counting followers make her very popular in the u.s for three years now she too has been a plus size model. Sophie Turner? Yes, she did one of Scotland, it's not a thing, so people sort of laugh about it. There's not really no, that's a not the Sophie Turner. Altogether. <laughs> um, I tried going to London, but I find more success in New York. Um, I just felt it was the place to be for it. Does she have it? Oh no. It's always like we need to rock internet, we need to rock fashion, we need to rock modeling world, we need to like shake it a bit. It's became boring, you know? I need to do like this, one, two, three. You know what, you are like French queen, Marie Antoinette, you know? Thanks to people like Karitza, the way that overweight women are perceived is changing in America. You can even become a beauty queen when you're obese. Perfect. We met one such pageant queen in the small town of Escondido, California. At age 34, Jennifer Gutierrez won the Miss Escondido contest for plus size women. Height? Five feet, five inches, weight, 280 pounds. Title, Miss Escondido Plus, 2019. And today at her home, it's the day of the big game. Like 98 million other Americans, Jennifer and her family are watching the Super Bowl. Oh my gosh. In America, Super Bowl is like, one of the biggest events ever. It's like, like, the, world cup in it's, it's like the World Cup in Europe. I don't know. And I don't means, even care for this terrible. one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Food, family, friends, and everybody goes crazy. And usually everybody is drinking and going nuts. But we have kids, so. Oh, oh, if you're having a Super Bowl party, you have to have. Chicken wings, huge like I mean, no. American thing. Nothing wrong with it. I had to move the chips up here because my children will live on chips if I let them. Deviled eggs, every bag. Ooh, yes, you nice. You have to have deviled eggs. Calories aren't an issue for Jennifer. They actually improve her image. It's thanks to being overweight that she was crowned Miss Plus. I'm so proud of you, baby. Oh, thanks, Daddy. <laughs> But now, Jennifer's dream is to become Miss Plus America. It's the biggest beauty pageant in the country for overweight women. First, however, she must win the California title. An intensive training program in Los Angeles prepares the candidates for the contest. At last, Jennifer will meet her competitors. Hi, Mrs. Escondido. I'm the current reigning Miss California Hello. Plus America. Hello. 
nice to meet hey, you. To meet you. This is the first time I've met everybody. I've got like first day of school jitters. <laughs> okay, I'm in my white shirt. The day begins with several photo shoots. Good. Hold that, hold that. It's the best way for the candidates to size each other up. Ready, one, two, and three. Awesome, gorgeous. Thank you. You're welcome. Look at that crown, I love it. I love it. I'm already a winner in my book because I've met so many people who are like, oh, there's a plus size Mrs. Escondido. And I'm all like, yeah, I'm like regular Mrs. Escondido, but I can have donuts. It's like the best world ever. Is that a thing, Escondido? Nobody wants to see it when you are walking on stage. Do you see? It's jiggling. It's jiggling. Being overweight doesn't mean letting yourself go, though. The candidates have to stay sexy at all costs. It gives that nice, smooth. So when I'm walking, guess what? There's no bouncing where you can feel like you're like, <gasps> and when you take it off, you're like, oh my gosh, I can finally breathe. It needs to be uncomfortable. I'm telling you, ladies, this will make the difference of whether you look good in a dress or you don't look good in a dress. Last item on the day's agenda, choreography. The women will be rehearsing this dance for several weeks. I am scared for the dancing part. <laughs> I have two left feet. So that's the only thing that I'm like really scared about is the dancing. <laughs> It's 8 a.m. in Anaheim, a city near Los Angeles. The new Miss California Plus will be crowned today. Jennifer barely managed to sleep. She is already getting ready to nab the title, a long cherished dream for her. They do make up themselves. I want to go to nationals. I would really like to win Supreme today. That would be amazing. I don't know if I'm going to. Frank, her husband, is with her to provide support. Yep, All right. everyone. Thanks, Set baby. up, you got it. Love the you. candidates have spent several thousand dollars on garments and accessories to improve their chances of making their childhood dream come true. Yes. Yeah, that's all their hobby. <laughs> I'm not touching my hands. The pageant's director, Cher Rue, enters <laughs> to wish everyone good luck. <laughs> With only a few minutes until showtime, the tension rises. Sugar free Red Bull, nice. The winner of the Mrs. Did you win? Did you win? No, oh, come on. for Jennifer is the national contest in July. This accomplishment would never have been possible without the body positivity movement. That's true. Body acceptance offers a glimmer of hope for millions of Americans. In a nation where 40% of people are overweight, one solution is to love yourself Did you hear just this? as you are.
body acceptance they said at the very end body acceptance instead of body positivity and i think that's a better term because body acceptance that's yeah maybe it's then also going to in this direction but i don't know i don't know obesity is a problem don't be obese <laughs> do something in my opinion the best thing you can do is martial arts uh, lift weights lift heavy weights from a to b um link to this awesome shirt here is going to be down in the comments below and also to other martial arts shirts and also to um, a program that helped me getting in shape and putting on some solid muscle basic stuff um not that expensive for everybody and i would say we see you in the next episode when we uh watch other documentaries right okay